All right, I'm on hole number two of the 2020 St. Patrick's Day Tournament. I'm in Tuesday's qualifying round of the Ricky Division. I'm on hole number two. And hole number two is in Dreamware Links, and it's hole number eight. Hole number eight. Da 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 da. Okay. I know, you know, we all know that if you can get the rush shot right, you can end up over here. But the key word in that was if. <laughs> you can get the shot right and the deal is is that it's not necessarily a bad shot hitting from the rough out here but i would rather have my needle speed being as slow as it can possibly be and the slowest club that you have for needle speed is your wedge and i would rather be in a shot where i take the same shot five times to get in than to end up here twice and end up in the rough three times or end up in the sand once and in the over here three times and i i, I don't want that inconsistency I want to come to this hole and give myself the best opportunity to put it in the cup every single time. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to try and do a rough bump out here. Now, I learned something yesterday. This is why we go out and practice on those days because you can pick some stuff up. And what I learned yesterday was on the drive, I set my drive up and I had a kingmaker. And I was using it. I'm going to use a Titan in this account because I, it, I don't have a lot of kingmakers in this account. My first bounce was in this area right here. My second bounce was in this area. And my third bounce was here. And I took the wind out and I, I clipped the fairway and then bled off into the, into the rough on the other side. And I then turned around and chipped it back over to the spot so I could see what kind of club I was in. And I, and I was in max wedge. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take off on the, I'm going to add on 20% wind on the drive because I hit the shot perfect. And it actually overdrove going down here. So I think it's downhill. I did find that by clipping it back over here in the practice round and then taking the shot up to the cup to see what that shot looked like, that these two areas here are flat and that they're level. And I, and I just did a normal wind adjustment and bam, I was in the hole. The wind is kind of blowing down the field here. So we can use the wind if we want, but I took the wind out and I'm going to add on 20% to try and make sure that I get this rough bump out into this area. So today we're putting what we learned from yesterday to the test. And there was no overpower, which is one of the things I liked about this shot. It Once we get the wind adjustment stuff worked out, it should be a very consistent every single time you come here, you do that stuff and you're in your wedge range. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking on these par fours because for me, the par fours are always the place that you can get ahead of your competition. And I want to get an eagle on all four par fours. And I want to get that eagle by putting myself in the best spot every single time. I don't want to be inconsistent where like sometimes I'm in the best spot and sometimes I'm in the rough or the sand. It's the rabbit and the hare or the rabbit and the turtle, it's consistency wins the race, right? So I'm trying to be, I'm trying to set my shots up so that I'm consistently in the same area, taking the same next shot. That way you can, every time you're out there, you're practicing that shot and you're getting better and better. Instead of making it a variable, so every time you're doing something different. And I set this shot up yesterday, so if you have, I have an extra mile nine in this account, but if you have an extra mile eight, you can do the same exact shot. I was only putting on six topspin. So I set it up exactly like you would if you were doing using an extra mile eight. So I wanted to get right in the middle of this fairway, so I give myself as much room as possible. We got three, six topspin. And we're just gonna hit it into that area. So it's three, four, that's a six, almost seven, so before one, and that's about a two ring pull. And I'm gonna hit it nice and easy, and I'm gonna put a little teeny bit of curl on it just for the end down there to make sure it stays in that fairway. And I hit it great to the right. Let's see if that was enough to bleed me on there. That's just enough to bleed me on there. Maybe if maybe a half a bar or more top spin, just so that you make sure that you end up in that area. So I'm going to change my six because I it doesn't. You could go a little bit deeper. I almost stuck when I hit it. So I'm going to go six point five top spin. 
And I think if you have an extra mile eight, you have 6.5 tops. And my rapier, which is the wedge that I have, hits 1.3 per ring. We'll see what the wind is. Ooh, just a little bit too much speed. That's why when I'm talking about like learning your distances and making sure that you're you're stopping at the cup, that's that's why right there. Three point seven Two point nine rings, and I should be right at max club. I'm gonna engage about one backspin. I want to make sure that tail is tailing off in the cup. I come forward just a little. That's three, it's 2.8 rings, so there's, let's go down here, let's get our direction right, there's one, 2.8 rings, I'm just trying to hit it perfect, and I hit it great, but I might be close enough. We'll see here. Right? You may be close enough, not quite. <laughs> you may be close enough that if you hit it, they hit it great to the left or the right, you might still get in, but you're going to have to hit that perfect. But that's the shot. So yesterday I went out and I tried several things. In my 77 account last night, I went out and played and I went bat crazy on every hole. And I went, I pulled out power five balls. I went for it on every single hole. I had to get that stuff out of my system. And in my odd account, I was trying to play a little more conservative just so that I could refresh myself with those shots. And consistency is going to be the key here. So that is the shot. I'm going to go ahead. I think I will qualify this account today. I'll play a few more holes and then make my mind up on how it's going. But I want to uh, try and pick up all those par fours. And I think that in, that is the way to do it right there. That is pretty similar to the way that we're getting wind in the tournament. And this is the deal. The big dog, one of my viewers was like, bring a club that's got less accuracy. It's one backspin. The deal there is, is that you still have to move a certain amount of rings. And if you have a two mile an hour win, you got a 100% accurate club, you got to move it two rings. And if you're in a lower accuracy club, like this club where it's two per ring, that distance on those rings is still the same. So see how it makes that jump right there? And so you can't do the wind adjustment between those two numbers because of the way that it bounces. And so you're either gonna have to bring a big wind ball or you're gonna have to come at it from a different, from a different spot, like using the back spot and bouncing it over. I think the, I think the way, and, and I'll, let's, let's talk about that with my opponent while they're doing the deal. So. It, you got a 100% accurate club, you're using your sniper, and you look at two rings on your sniper, that's the same exact, like you're using a less accurate club, the big dog, which is 2.1 per ring. And it's one, it's center ring, it's yellow ring, is the same size as the two rings on the sniper. And when you get to that two ring range is where it drops off the sand, and so your choices are you could bring it out farther to the side so you're farther away from the sand and put side spin on it to bring it to the hole and that might be the solution. Or you can hit from a different spot or you can bring a low wind ball but the low wind ball is not going to help you if we have a 3-2 win and you end up with a 2-1 two, a two one with the low wind ball. When you get to that 2 miles per hour rate, whatever club you use, whether it's 2 miles per hour per ring or one mile per hour ring, when you get to that point where you've moved out two miles per hour in the spot that we're really looking for, you're engaging that sand and all of a sudden it'll jump and you go from, you go from two to two five. And so if you need to make a 2.2 wind adjustment, you can't make it or a 2.4, you can't make it. 
you're either at two or two five. And so anything that falls in between there is going to be a problem. If the wind was four, it makes that jump. And then once you get past that jump, you're fine. So if we had a four wind, a higher wind, so I'm almost thinking that it would be better to bring out a ball that, that makes the wind, but it's going to depend on what kind of wind we start off with. So if we start off with, you know, if we start off with a two, three wind and you're using a Marlin, and then you could switch it to a navigator. You could switch it to a different ball to cut that wind down a little bit. So it's that hole is going to be a little bit of an issue. And I really think, and what I'm going to explore in my 77 account is here's the, here's the rough and here's the sand is instead of starting in the spot where we're going straight out and we're not using side spin, bringing it over as far as I can, which lengthens out the distance that I am from the sand and then putting side spin to get over to the hole. I'm going to work on this hole as the week goes on because of the way the wind's blowing. The shot that we normally take is being affected. And you can see right there on that sand where I was adjusting it back and forth, how it makes that hop and you're missing a half, maybe, maybe two thirds of a ring. And any adjustment that you needed to make in the middle, you can't make it. <laughs> All right. I will keep working on that hole. That In my game, that's a hole I'm just going to keep working on as the week goes on. I'm going to keep dialing that hole in and I'm going to keep working on it. And I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that's having those wind issues on that hole. All right. That was hole number two of the St. Patrick's Day Tournament and Tuesday's qualifying round in the Ricky Division. Thanks for watching.